So much credit has to be given to Tax Stone of, uh, of the Tax Season podcast when he interviewed Meek last year. And it was one of those tell-all interviews where everything came out. And your only job as an interviewer was to just sit back and let your subject just go. You've got this situation here with Jim Jones. Obviously, Jim Jones, if you guys don't know, isn't even a rapper. I mean, Jim Jones is the epitome of a goon. It's the only reason why he was ever on Dipset. And he describes it in this interview. Cam was always the baby face, you know, to, to use wrestling terms. Cam was always the prized possession, and I was just there to protect him. And I guess it just so happens that afterwards, Jimmy just turned it into an actual career. I would say that a, a more of a balance between a goon and a rapper would be Beanie Siegel, who was more of a rapper than he was a goon, but he was definitely there to be the enforcer, hence the name The Broad Street Bully. Jim Jones is on Hot 97, and he's crying. Okay, it's, it's not one of those emotional, awkward cries. He's giving you a bit of information, a whole lot of information about a situation that turned ugly between him and Cam. And I guess what he's describing is a lot of personal encounters where people that he knew went to jail. He went to jail several times and put himself at risk for the betterment of Dipset. And when you've got a situation like that, you've just got to let the motherfucker go. Let him go just like tax. Let Meek go. Meek was nowhere near crying, but he was giving you the details, the inner workings of how the beef started between him and Drake. And there's a lot of value to that. And as an interviewer, you've got to shut the fuck up. Something that's been very difficult for Flex to do for plenty of years now. You've got one of the most important sound bites that you could have as a radio show host over the past year. Obviously, you had last year with The Breakfast Club, their biggest moment was put some respect on my name. A different, different scenario with Birdman, but still their most popular soundbite of the year. Jim Jones isn't necessarily going to give Flex the views online, but in this digital space, Jim Jones still has some sort of, of relevance. So you've got to just let the guy go because they, they, there were certain parts where Jim talks about God and in the next few sentences, you can already hear Flex about to interrupt him and just... He just couldn't wait to be flex. He just couldn't wait to talk. And it's frustrating because you want to hear the story of what happened between Dipset. I, I'm not going to pretend like I know what goes on in the inner workings of all these personal relationships. I don't get into all that. I know a lot of this is business strategies and one person wanting to get the, the heads up on another. That's why you've got to take a look at Jay-Z in this situation and... As we all remember, Jay-Z had a beef with Nas. Jay-Z had beef with Fat Joe. Jay-Z had beef with Cameron. He had beef with Jim Jones. He's had beef with a lot of people. And Jay-Z has ended up employing the people that he used to beef with. Jim Jones was considered a boss at some point. He was a boss at Koch Records. He was a boss to some degree, and you could probably consider him a boss uh, within the Dipset rankings, but now he signed to Rock Nation because at this point in his career, as he told Flex, was well, Flex told him, you've got to eat. Now that he has pretty much broken up ties with Cam, and I listened to an interview that Cam did about a month ago with Angie Martinez where where Cam basically laid out why he doesn't talk to Jim anymore. 
And rants like this are pretty much the reason why Cam doesn't communicate with him anymore. Cam's whole reasoning was, you can call me at any time. You can always call me. There's no need to say things over social. There's no need to say things over radio because you can always speak to me. You can only imagine that Cam is watching that interview of him crying and being overly emotional, you know, giving you one of those Cam faces like, fuck you talking about, B? Niggas die every day. You tough, right? Is that how the quote goes? I want to see paid him for like 15 times i'm so stupid i can't even remember the lines you can only imagine that this is going to drive them further apart from each other what did you guys think about this interview because if you haven't created music that suggests that you are a vulnerable person a fragile person it's kind of odd to then see you in an interview years later and say, I'm driven by emotion. Really? That's something that I would have never thought when it came to Jim Jones. I wouldn't have thought that Jim Jones is driven by emotion. I mean, obviously, he's if he's a goon, he's an emotional guy because he's always angry. But you would never think that Jim Jones would be the guy to cry on the airwaves, which is even more to the point uh, why you should just shut the fuck up and let him talk. But what did you guys think? Please let me know in the comments section below, and I will see you guys next time.